I don't care how you was feeling before. Nope. But right now, it's time to feel good. Yeah. Let's go. I'm good. I'm good. So hey, Corinne. So we are here today, and we are at our episode one, and we are first dealing with the heat. So. It's actually got the hottest today in Southern California at 114, so we're trying to do our best to stay out of the heat, and so we thought we'd podcast today. Why not? So this is our first episode. We're very excited to be here, and it's funny how the kids don't seem to notice the heat, but only us adults whine about it. So I don't know where you are in the country, where you are in the world uh, listening into us, but uh, we are really happy to be here, and our episode uh, today is going to start with something called Staycations. And we have that had us thinking about vacations. You know, kids are out of school right now. The weather is very summery. And, you know, I know we have a lot of dreams about vacations and what we can do with the, with the kids out. You know, we're going to take a long vacation in Hawaii with the kids. Yeah, then reality sets in and we're like, okay, what can we do? So do we have time? Do we have the funds? And, you know, we're going to just talk about that today. Just see, you know, what we can do to make kind of some just suggestions for you and, Corinne, I know you're excited about this weekend. You've got some things going on. What's happening? Absolutely. I'm taking my very first staycation, like very, very first staycation. It's supposed to be like death weather. Like I now know what hell feels like because it is a million degrees outside. So I got a new swimsuit. I want to show it off. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that's really, I'll be completely honest, that's the real reason, <laughs> because I don't get to wear one often, and I'm usually in a mom suit, you know, like the like a one piece that holds everything in. Well, I know you have a one and a half year old son, so you're meaning, so Dylan, your son, he can't pull it off your suit is what you're saying. Right, or when I'm having to like <laughs> juggle, you know, a million things and um, practically turn upside down and inside out to get the kids in the pool and putting on sunscreen and th- things fall out, <laughs> things fall out. And so I'm normally in a mom suit, but since I'm going to have my husband there with me, I have roughly 50 to 60% less things that I need to do. That's and good. so I'm hoping to get a few moments where I can sit still and not get really weird tan lines. So I'm super excited about that. And it makes me feel like a really super mom because I cool. get to trick them. You get they the think they're them. going away. Oh, so we're doing this whole suitcase thing. Yeah, no, they're <laughs> they're they're packing a whole suitcase <laughs> and we're going away, but it's like 10 minutes away. And how long are you going for? Just the weekend. Just yeah. And when she means the weekend, she means one night, folks. Just one <laughs> night. <laughs> one night, two yeah. days. <laughs> but to them, it's a, a, a complete getaway. Right. Yeah, they're it's very exciting if you take your kids just to an overnight at a hotel, think about it. You know, you've got air conditioning, you've got a pool. Um, they get to pack their bags. They're just so excited. And, and you know, Corinne's kids are one and a half and six. So they're like, you know, road trip. We're <laughs> really excited about this down the street. But when you've got little ones and you're trying to figure out, you know, just how to pack and everything, it, you're not far from home. So if you have to go back and get something, at least you're you're good. And there's air conditioning. There's air conditioning. And all things great happen when it's cool. Like my husband is okay with touching me when it's cool. Yeah. We we do that half like eighth grade dance <laughs> distance <laughs> arms thing. And we're just like, mm, uh, don't yeah. touch me. Yeah. I love you from afar. From afar. Yeah. You look so great yeah. over there. Yeah. The glow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Southern California glow when um, you may not have air conditioning. And you should, you know, the listeners should know, you know, Corinne lives in Long Beach. I live in Laguna Beach. And the beach is supposed to mean that we've got these ocean breezes that come in. Again, I mentioned that we're over 100 this week. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter how breezy the ocean is, you still feel like you're in a microwave. It's just hot air. It's being just hot air. Face. Yeah, that's all it is. Now, I do have air conditioning uh, where I live, but. It's still you're you're in the house and you're stuck in air conditioning. So at least you're you're going to be outside in the pool and then you'll get to go back up to the hotel and yeah. And I'll be honest, um, you know, my husband and I work a lot, and my husband actually works two jobs and I work full time as well, and we have opposite hours, kind of, and it creates for a lot of um, 
scheduling conflict and it's really great. He only gets one weekend off a month. So it'll be really, really nice to just unwind, be together, spend time together. And the kids love it. They, they are always much better behaved when we're both around and uh that's good no, I'm, I'm just excited that's exciting and it, you know and when we're talking about staycations and we're talking about being close to home and you know just doing some of these examples with the kids what we're talking about is really you know connecting with your family in 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 what we call a kind of a minimalistic sense you know i know that a lot of families out there may not have you know the financial means to go on a vacation or the time actually and, um, you know, I know, weren't you able to use like hotel points and that was yeah. great and that, you know, that get, saves you money. And, um, I know in, in our life, so I kind of mentioned, you know, um, what Corinne small kids, she has small kids. Well, I have an adult daughter who lives at home while she is getting her master's degree in teaching and, um, just put it out there. She's, she lives at home. Um, did I mention she lives at home? And she, (laughs) so for those of you that have small kids or older kids or teenagers, you know, we love our kids. We do. Let's not take anything away from them, but they cramp our style a little bit. And when you get into the adult age, um, they tend to just think the house is theirs and they don't understand what, you know, uh, mom and dad private time is. (laughs) And so staycations are necessary, not just for the, the mommies out there, but no, she still calls me mommy. What am I thinking? No, the, the, the moms who have the older kids as well. But, um, and then she's, of course, like, oh, sweet, you're leaving party Passing time. Itself. Yeah, and she's pretty clear, like, so how long are you gone? When are you leaving? What day? What time? When are you be back? How exactly, much time? what time? Like, yeah. I need you to call me so I can make sure <laughs> that everybody is exactly. gone. Yeah, well, you know what? And you're, you have a home office. I do. So being able to get out of the house to just kind of relocate, recalibrate, I'm sure that's essential and completely vital to your brain function. It's it makes it makes it tough. And actually, my husband um, he forces me to do things, and I really and it was actually part of the, one of the things I wanted to talk about today. On the Fourth of July, I worked all day in my home office, and I also have a satellite office because I, I own a business, and it just just because everybody's hovering. My husband's a teacher, and so he's home now for summer vacation. Summer is a substitute teacher while she's doing that, but she also works a second job, but she's home now because she doesn't have a steady hours. And then there's me, who's still working full time, and they just come into your home office, and what are you doing? Or I have a funny story to tell you, and you're like, I'm working. working. <laughs> yeah, and Corinne and I have very, um, uh, jo- very high I don't want to say high corporate jobs, but very high stress jobs that um, we need to focus. And in some capacity, we're both auditors. And Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we have to focus on what we're doing and interruptions do not allow us to focus on what we're doing. And so um, there, you know, it's just trying to get away from that. But getting back to the, the topic, staycation isn't just, it doesn't have to be just going overnight at a hotel. We've got some fun examples here. You know, and think about what you can do for your family. What is something that you feel like you could take the time for and make it special for them? And it doesn't have to be about money. It can be just about the connection, the time, the the reconnecting with your family. We like to call it being present, mm-hmm. you know, just really putting your phone away. And I don't mean just putting it on silent. Turn off your phone. Just seriously. If you think I just told you what to do, I did. <laughs> I just did. You know, turn off your phone. I'm a mom, so I, I do that. Sorry, I tell you what to do. Um, I know I put mine uh, on the side of my bed at night and it goes on silent at 10 and then it turns back on at, at eight, but I'm telling you, it doesn't mean I don't keep checking it, you know, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm, uh, you know, there. So, um, but it's a couple of the examples uh, remember now I grew up in the seventies and so, and Crin's a what little, what was that like? Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> Crin's a little bit younger than me. We won't, we just won't go how much younger. Um, but again, her kids are six and one, so do the math. <laughs> but, you know, what we did is we, first of all, we didn't have cell phones and we had sprinklers. You know, that you can still buy a sprinkler. The I ones love that, a good sprinkler. The sprinklers that go up and down, you can still get them at Home Depot. People forget that. The fuck that. Get a hose. <laughs> Spray them. They don't know the difference. Spray them down. Exactly. Exactly. You can get slip and slides. They still sell those at Walmart. Those hurt. They do hurt, except what you do is you um, you get the, the kids like to just get the couch cushions and they put them underneath. Oh no, that's bad. No, <laughs> I'm just thinking about right my now. couch cushions that just got poop all over them. So I was like, but that would be a good way to, yeah. Clean them. See, two and one, see? 
I, I always try to help. But that's really clever. Yeah. I'm see? curious how you figure that out. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, you know, you could do beach days. Beaches are great. Now, beaches are sandy. And I know people are like, oh, lugging the whole, the kids down there and all the doing the beach stuff. But the beach is almost free. It's a dollar an hour at a lot of our beaches here in, in California. So Not the one I live next to. And what's yours? Free. Free, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm down in Laguna, you know, where the snooty people live. <laughs> I I actually, it's funny. I was just talking about that one with a friend. It took me about, I don't know, seven hours to decide if I wanted to go to the beach and do the haul with the little ones. (laughs) Now with my daughter, because she's six, she's tons of fun at the beach. I can let her loose. She's just scared enough not to go too far, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Might be my doing. I might have scared her a little bit. Um, So be careful of the sharks. (laughs) That don't exist. And the jellyfish. Yeah. um, And the seaweed. Seaweed's scary. But um, but my son, he's at the stage where he wants to simultaneously eat the sand and run straight into the water. Yeah. And that's a heart attack every time. And when you're by yourself, it's hard. So, But if you're doing it as a family, you've got this whole like village of, of people, of, of hands. I can't emphasize the amount of hands that are necessary yes. for kids. But I love a good beach day. Yeah, beach days love are fun. Love a good beach day. I just want to make sure that there's something to hose them off, and then I'm fine. It's just the, the sand that comes in my car. Fourth of July, we went to the beach, and the kids were just, they were so happy. But mm-hmm. let's just say you couldn't do a, a beach day. So one staycation that we used to do is, you know, the kids had their chores during the day, or we had to do stuff, and we're like, okay, pencils down. You know, electronics down, leave them in the house, you know, whatever. And we would just basically go down, take some wood, take our s'mores, and just do a bonfire. And the kids were like, oh, my gosh, Mommy, this is so great. So those are fun. You don't have to stay all day to do that. You know, you can actually go down and try to – And some one thing that's really cool, and, you know, try this. Even if you're a shy person, try this. You see somebody down there that has a pit and you didn't get one because, you know, I I know this weekend there was 114 people in line for 14 pits. (laughs) And her, and actually, the, the police had to came <laughs> had to come because people were like, "That's my pit, then that that's my pit." I was like, "Really?" Um, but to say, is there any chance we could share your pit? We'll share our s'mores, and we've done that a couple times. We're like, "Yeah, move on in here, scooch in." So something fun. It's funny that you mention it. I I have a lot of uh, friends and family in the Midwest, and they don't have beaches like us, but they do have lakes. And I remember having the best time and there's very little sand. It's not the sand like ours, but they also do a lot of camping and um, outdoors activities. It's very similar to what you were just talking about with the fire pits. And it, I would assume it costs little to no money and it was the time of my life. Oh, it's so fun. And I don't like to camp because I don't like dirt. (laughs) <laughs> or sand <laughs> yes it's just not my favorite but um i kids get dirty and you know you shouldn't have them if they if you don't like dirt <laughs> so you know but i as long as i can wash it off i'm okay but um one of the things that's really fun too is just to go to a park and bring bubbles especially if you have kids your age i mean your son has to must want to always eat the bubbles eat them catch them play with them i mean that's got to be too fun for him it's a blast, except I get lightheaded, but from blowing on them. <laughs> but it is so much fun, and it's so simple because you can just go to the dollar store you can. and get the big thing with the big wand. It's so and, inexpensive, and then they try to do it themselves, which is like twenty minutes of them pretty much eating soap. But they they have a blast, they do. and then they can run around because they're at the park. Um, it's it's inexpensive. It's fun. It is. It's, they get their vitamin D, they're outside, they're and outside. then they're tired. And they're tired. It tires them out. Absolutely. Yes. Just like a pool day. Yes. You know, pool days are great. Bring, bring the floaties. You know, Never forget your floaties or your sunscreen. That's the biggest thing. Just mm-hmm. You always have to have two of those things and water bottles. <laughs> but the one thing that also that, that's really fun to do, and this is something. So I was a very structured mom when Summer was little. Just That's just who I was. So for those of you that aren't structured, there's no judgment here. <laughs> this is just who I was, and I kind of still am a little bit. But being that way, it made it a little bit more kind of fun because when I went outside my middle, you know, outside the lines a little bit, I think my daughter was like, oh, what's mom doing? You know, so we would, I'd, it would be dark and we had a clear night and uh, we could see stars. And so I said, okay, let's uh, get in the car. And she's like, 
but it's nine o'clock. I'm like, I know, but you're not really tired, are you? And she goes, as she's trying to not fall asleep. And she's like, no, mommy, I'm not. And so we'd get a blanket and we'd go, there's a hill uh, where we live, right by a kind of a park. And we'd go stargazing. And we'd just go sit on a blanket and get to count stars and try to find the Big Dipper. And we'd just do it for 30 minutes. But to me, that's a staycation because... It's just something that she'll remember. She even talks about it today. We went stargazing, you know, and it's just fun. Sometimes it's just a switch of routine. It is. Uh, Staycation is kind of this uh, multifaceted concept. It's really to reconfigure what you're currently doing day in, day out, over and over and over again on repeat. Because as moms, we get wrapped up into this, um, this routine, this structure, which is necessary to function. But then you realize, you know, you've gone three months and you've done the same thing almost every single day. And kids need structure, in my personal opinion. Um, That's why they they thrive so well at school and things like that. However, they need the... um, they, they need the adventure because it triggers their adventurous mind, which also triggers creativity and artistic capabilities and things it like does. that. And again, this is my personal opinion, but um, my, my daughter requires structure to like the 10th degree. Yeah. Um, when she is home for like spring break, she loses her shit. <laughs> I mean, she loses her shit if she's home with me. I, I dread more than four or five days with her n- only for the simple fact. Now, because that's my BFF. Carson, that's my boo thing, okay? She's bay day all day. But she's a little shithead. <laughs> and she will, like, lose her mind if she doesn't have the structure and so, like, for example, for summertime, we pay for her to have this summer camp. And they do all these amazing things for for all the kids. But I don't let that be in lieu of um, family time. Your time. Yeah. Right. So even though she's going to amusement parks and doing all these great things, and we're just taking her down the street to a hotel with a cool pool, she thinks it's amazing because she gets to stay at a hotel. Yeah. And she gets to pack herself. and. and- yeah, that's, I, that's actually, the fun part. I, I think, I'm sorry, I think I packed her bag. Oh, yeah. Did she get at least to pick her bathing suit? She did. Oh, God. I, oh. Do, I, I bought her a new one. Oh, a two nice. new two ones. ones. So yeah. They, they both and are going? So she's, yes. That's cool. cool. That's cool. She doesn't need options. She doesn't. Yeah. I bought two. I'm of bringing two. Options. You've seen you've seen my daughter on her social media. She's How like many? Seventy two. Seventy three. I think she's up to now, but good count. Yeah. Summer. Shout out to you. Yeah. Summer. I'm gonna need uh, to steal those. Yeah. My daughter is into her bikinis, and it's just it's frightening. Yeah. I'm not telling you what her um, Instagram is, as in summertime, but yeah, okay. <laughs> She's going to be like, mom, mom. But it's something funny because my friends are like, well, we do backyard camping, you know, trips where we put up a tent and we put, um, you know, pillows out there and all kinds of stuff, which to me would be kind of hard if it's on the ground, but okay. You know, they put kind of mm-hmm. uh, some pl- some mats underneath and they're like, you know, what can we do to make it even more camping? And I'm like, well get TV dinners and make sure that they're out in a, you know, I mean, obviously you have to make them in the house, but if they're, if you're getting a TV dinner, you're like, that's kind of camping. Cause that's how you kind of, you know, over the fire. I said, we put their milk in thermoses. So they have to like do it that way. Uh, and then bring card games and there's no lights out there. It has to be with flashlights <laughs> and so those kinds of things. And, and the kids are like, Oh my gosh, this is so funny. So that actually reminds me I've done, um, like slumber party yeah. and I'm air quoting right now. Cause you guys can totally see me. Um, just like they, they love to just be doing something different and they go to sleep in their bed and they have their bedtime routines. Don't get me started on the dang bedtime yeah, routines. We'll get to that. <laughs> season, yeah. Um, but really and truthfully laying out blankets on the floor and pillows and making a fort and letting them watch a movie and then they fall asleep like that. My my daughter thinks I'm the coolest mom ever when I do that. Yeah, mine does too. She just she's like, I can't believe we're doing this. And we and when we do that, we usually have to have um, popcorn and oh, we, in a bowl. Do, yeah, in a bowl, mm-hmm. and, or it has to be uh, one thing that uh, it used to be Blockbuster, but they're no longer around. I miss. Blockbuster Remember, so they much. used to have those popcorn popcorn buckets. Like you can get at the movies. You, you can get them at Walmart now. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I used to go every Tuesday with my mom <laughs> and pick out on a good day two movies and we would get licorice and the popcorn. Well, Walmart has the popcorn buckets still. And then they also have for uh, $1.25 the giant, you know, 
popcorn or the giant um, movie candy. And we were, you pick, let them pick out one. You know, I know the parents are probably listening to this or going, that's so sugar overload. Just let them pick out one. And then, you know, they, sometimes they'll eat some of it. You're going to have a kid that's going to be like, I'm eating every bit of this if you're giving it to me. I know who those kids are. Yeah, one of them lives in my house, <laughs> especially if it's Reese's. But I know what I'm saying is that there's times when, you know, you just got to let them do it. It's just one of those fun nights and letting them do it. But I wanted to comment on something you said about structure just real quick. Yeah. You know, if you're a mom like us who we have certain kids that need structure, other kids probably could be fine without it. But one of the things that my pediatrician told me uh, when Summer was a baby, and I'll never forget it, is that kids who really are well adjusted are kids who always know what's coming next. And, you know, for the parents out there that are thinking, well, I'm not, I'm just, you know, I'm just not that structured or anything, you know, have a little bit if you can, just if you can, you know, just if you can make any kind of effort to, you know, they know that what time breakfast is and, you know, that, that homework's done when they get home from school, things like that. If they have that kind of what comes next, then they put that expectation on themselves a little bit as well, because then they know that, well, if I get my homework done, maybe then I'll have some negotiating power. And so, We've, we've kind of lived by that motto. And he had six kids, so we felt like he was kind of an expert. <laughs> Not just being a pediatrician, but he had six kids, and he goes, my kids always know what comes next. And then if, if you go outside the norm or you're spontaneous, I think that you get kind of a little bit more out of your, your kids as far as the fun part. Well, spontaneous is, um, is supposed to be rare. It's, if it's spontaneous every day, it's, it loses its emphasis. Right. So I think kids appreciate it. Um, but they thrive in a a certain type of environment. Yeah, and I think, too, there's, you know, the other things that we have as far as, you know, some staycation uh, examples. For those of you that have really small kids, so uh, just like Corinne's son, uh, Dylan, who's who's one and a half, the mall, I know, I hate the mall. I'm just going to put it out there. I absolutely hate the mall. I love Amazon. (laughs) Amazon Amazon Prime. Prime. (laughs) Yeah, they need to get, we just plug them. They need to, they need to sponsor our show. At Amazon Prime. 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 Yeah, exactly. Um, But I mean, I just, I, I, gosh, with, with online shopping, who needs them all? And, but there are malls out there that are, did you know 2 million square feet? No, I'm not saying 200,000. I actually looked them up today. You would get the statistics. I know. And I was looking up a couple of these, of these malls and actually, I did look them up, and there was a couple of them. I couldn't believe it. I was like, no way. That is not, that is, that just can't be correct. But there was, and I didn't bring them, but there was a couple of malls out there, like Mall of America, that's in in, uh, Minneapolis. Yes. South Coast Plaza, which is by us, which is, Mm -hmm. I, I try to not call it the Snooty People Mall. It's in Costa Mesa, California, but it's, let's just say that what you get there, as far as a dress, you might spend a paycheck on versus what you get at a mall at a different place. <laughs> it's just very expensive, but you could take your kid there and, and there's they have the play merry-go-round. areas. Merry-go-round inside, inside mm-hmm. merry-go-round people. Um, the play areas are, and the climbing areas are just fantastic. You know, um, because I've lived a lot of places. So um, on the East Coast and the Midwest um, and the Northwest th- with the climates, yeah. um, you know, because staycations aren't necessarily just for the summertime. Right. Um, but the, the climates are different there. So they're more um, apt to have colder weather as well. So people are trying to find something to do over the weekend uh, that's it doesn't involve snow um, or, oh, or below, right. for, you know. So they have, I would have to say... The Northwest, Northeast, Midwest, they have some of the best malls yeah. for kids. And it's it's amazing. Oh, the gallery amazing. in Texas. That one is, yes. yeah, that one's over 2 million square feet as well. And some of them, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Rainforest Cafe. Oh, love it. Kids love that place. Yes. Love that place. They and actually so. just took down the one at uh, Downtown Disney. Oh, did they? Sad story. Oh, that is a sad story. I didn't know that. Yeah, we're, we're about... Well, I know I'm about uh, 40 minutes from Disneyland. How far are you? Like 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. yeah. One upper. That's one thing you'll know about Corinne. <laughs> she tries to one up me every time, and so she does a really good job. <laughs> just take it that way. I can't help it that I'm always one better than you. <laughs> I know, exactly. And she's like a complete one upper. It's like, really? Okay. Yeah, my daughter's 23 and does it. She goes, Well, actually, I have two kids, and I balanced them on my lap. Why I like quilted, you know, did a quilt and also fed them dinner and did this. Okay, then. That's just a Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that you'll find about us is that we we have this contrast, not just because I have an adult child and she has small kids, 
um, and we get along so well. But one of the things that I we we actually love the contrast. But the one thing that's really different, I can't even imagine having two kids or multiple kids. And I think I I realize how spoiled I was now with just one because that's what you focus on. And and for those of you that have just one kid or you have you know six kids. It's it's interesting because um, I've t- you know I have so many friends that have multiple kids you know my 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 brother my uh, younger brother has one my older brother not older than me but the older brother he has three and then um, my sister has two kids but it's it's funny because one is a lot of work and then you add one that's a youngster into the mix and I see what you go through happy being a mom <laughs> but I mean you've got one that's trying to probably do her homework have a snack and then you've got your son on your hip wanting his own thing going on and you know it's just like I don't I don't know how you do it some days and and your full-time job and the whole bit so it is absolutely insane I would not change it for the world but it is none of it (laughs) well (laughs) um, no I I love it so much and I was just saying to my husband yesterday um that I never realized a, a job that was so exhausting and soul sucking um, <laughs> could be so amazing. And I say job because I it, it requires a lot of dedication, a it lot does. of attention. You cannot half ass parenthood. No. And when it gets hard, you have to keep going and you have to follow through. And that that's what makes it so challenging because when you're tired and you don't feel like in implementing something that you've you know you have to follow through with um that's when you really have to do it because the kids pay attention you like making dinner like me <laughs> i mean okay you know, I know how we're, I feel not, about I know. we're not gonna get into that right now but i know i i just kind of put out that put that out there because we're gonna have some hopefully later episodes where we'll just talk about that but it was just kind of funny <laughs> I cringe at the thought of the five o'clock the hour. The five o'clock hour, and it approaches every day. You notice that every I day. I tell it not to. I just wanted to skip right to seven thirty bedtime routine. But then I cringe at that because bedtime routine is this whole other subject matter. But um, we we really wanted to to start off expressing how much we love being a parent. Yes, and it's different dynamics in addition to understanding and acknowledging how hard it is to be a good parent. It, you can Anybody can be a parent, but to be a good parent, it takes so much work. And I'm not saying, I'm, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I would say I'm a good parent. I feel like I am. I feel like I've made wrong decisions. I feel like I've failed, super mom fails. But I also know that that's part of it. There's no handbook. I'm, Tara, I'm waiting for you to, to do a manual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Along with all your other manual, you know, she's, you're like, you're a nurse, you're yeah. certified, you, you have brain things, you know, things. Parenting is just another animal altogether because parenting is really on the job training. I mean, you do what you do, what works for you and you hope that your kids survive it and that you survive it. I think to me, the biggest thing is that if you hear your kids laughing more than you hear them upset, if you hear them um, coming to you and, you know, the mommies and the, you know, coming over quick for a snuggle and, you mm-hmm. know, and when they're, remember that when they're upset and you're the first person they come to, you're doing a good job. If somebody was saying that to me the other day. They're just like, she always comes to me when she's crying. And I'm like, okay, but that means that you're a point of comfort. I'm like, it, it's unfortunate that she's always crying, but maybe let's figure out what's going on there. Yeah. I said, but, you know, they come to you when it's funny. One of the things about having an adult child, my daughter and I are just absolutely best friends. And um, and it's just, it's great because it's it's hard because of the the balance between being a mom and being a friend. Mm-hmm. And it's easier when you're an adult than when they're a kid. Um, but I always think of her as a kid, um, but she just, she, she's just so funny and she just constantly now remembers, she's like, I remember when you did this and I remember when you did that and things that I'm like, oh yeah, I did do that. Didn't I? One of the things we were actually talking about today when I was telling her our topic tonight is summer says, remember when, 
you know how everybody like takes their kids out in the snow and takes their kids out when it's hot? She goes, remember when everybody's like, well, what are we going to do? It's raining. You're like, well, we're going out in the rain. And I go, I do remember that. And she's like, she goes, nobody does that. And I was telling somebody the other day, my mom was like, okay, put on a bathing suit and shorts and we're all going out in the rain. We're going to eat raindrops. And that was fun. This is a moment I'd like to dedicate to my mom right now because (laughs) um, running in the rain was something that I did growing up and something that my mom always taught me to do. And it is a pure release of all negativity. It is so happy. And I have photos that I cherish with my best friend, Anna. And when I lived in Wisconsin, running in the rain, up and down the street, barefoot, just a mess. (laughs) And I've been doing it ever since, and I do it with my daughter, and all because of my mom. And there's so many times where I go back, and I tell my mom as often as I can how much I remember, just like Summer did with you, because as a mom, you don't get those moments of reassurance. And um, every time I get the opportunity to not only tell my mom that I remember, but that I'm doing it now also with my child or with your children, it's huge. It and is. It's, it's, it's fun because it, it's things that they're like, oh, why don't we play in the rain? I mean, my husband's a, a swim coach, and he says the kids are like, do we have to um, practice today in the pool because it's raining? And he goes, you're getting wet. <laughs> but there's such a stigmatism out there that you don't go outside in the rain. And I'm like, well, I do. <laughs> my kids are going to go outside in the rain. And, I mean, we take them out in other weather. Why not the rain? And, you know, it's, it's actually a different concept for kids. Now, One time, and this will just be a mom fail, and this is how we're going to kind of wrap up our show today. Um, I took her out in the rain, which I thought was rain, and it was hail. No! (laughs) That hurts. (laughs) So at that point, I thought, you know what? The spontaneity (laughs) at this moment was probably not one of my best times. Um, But (laughs) here's here's Summer. Uh, (laughs) Enjoy Black Eye real quick. She's like, ow. (laughs) Ow, that really hurt. Yeah. But (laughs) I want to give one last shout out to something you can do, and we'd call it a staycation, but... You know, really try to explore your city. Explore your city. Everybody wants to go away and, you know, go on this vacation that costs a ton of money and everything. You know, we mentioned we live in beach towns, and I don't know where you live, but, you know, take your kids out to explore your city. I found out today, so a limo ride in California per hour averages about $125, and it's a minimum two hours. But if you do it in, let's say, Houston, Texas, it's only 50 I actually called somebody in Idaho. It's twenty seven fifty. I'm moving to Idaho. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that there are ways to do things that your kids are like, what is that? And I'm like, um, that's a limo. Okay, but I'm eight. And I'm like, and today we're going through Burger King in a limo. So just explore your city, you know, enjoy your town and, and figure it out. But and you know, I, I think hopefully um, Corinne agrees with me. Be present. Be present. Get rid of the electronic devices for a couple of hours, an, an overnight stay. Do it local if you can, but staycations are, are that, that break we need with our kids, with our family, with our husbands, with our partners, significant others, just to reconnect. And you can do it very inexpensively, and, you know, it's just a fun time. And uh, we'd like to know also where what ideas you might have um, for staycation. We are not uh, the all-knowing staycation planners. <laughs> so well, I am, but you, you might go ahead you and clearly have done your research. <laughs> um, yeah, your your research is there, um, but we would love to know. I mean, all I know we we're reaching all over the world on this podcast, and there is uh, nothing like knowing your own town, your own state. So we encourage you to to either uh, DM us on on Instagram or email us, share with us. I mean, we we would love to know and. You use those ideas for our children and to pass them along to our listeners. So we encourage you to reach out. We thank you so much for that in advance. And we just want to say, you know, thanks for being with us on our episode one. Find us again on Instagram at the Bun Life Official and uh, email us anytime at the Bun Life Official at gmail.com. And so until our next episode, everyone make it a great day. <laughs> <laughs>